So I've been making games now for over 10 years, which is crazy to think about. If there's one thing that I'm certain of, there are certain skills and personality traits that successful people have within the game dev room. These are just things that I've noticed over the past few years. They're not scientifically proven at all, but it's not crazy to think that there would be a few mindsets or skills that we should be honing and looking to get better at. And if you have these skills, you probably have what it takes to make games and you should be doing it right now. That's what we're talking about today. Before we get into it though, I don't want anybody to leave this video feeling discouraged if you don't have these skills. Be sure to stick around until the end because I'm going to talk about some encouragement and a few next steps that you can take today. Let's get into it. First thing is follow through. If you have the ability to follow through, shoot, you should be, what are you doing here? You're way ahead of me at this point. And I know what people are going to be thinking, follow through to completing games. It goes much bigger than that. If you have the ability to follow through on these small things, on the small edits here and there that people often forget about, you have what it takes because so many people, myself included, have a hard time following through on the small things because the fact of the matter is the small things add up and many people, myself included, get hung up on the final product, the final image. And it's so much more than that. It's so much smaller than that. And there's even different aspects to it from game development to even speaking with your team and following through and not being flaky because myself can be flaky sometimes. If you have the ability to follow through, man, you have a leg up because many people struggle with it, myself included. Let's keep going. Next one on the list is a willingness to learn. If you're one of those people that love experimenting with new things like AI or different engines, man, you are going to be so valuable. Not that your value is linked to that, but many people do not have a willingness to learn. They're stuck in their ways. I can fall into this many times. A clear example of this is AI. Many people just threw AI to the side and they were just like, it's just gonna fade like everything else. But the people who took the time to learn and had a willingness to look at it, they have a leg up now and they're miles ahead of the people who chose not to take it seriously. And this is dialed up to 11 when it comes to marketing. Marketing your game, marketing towards people. If you are charismatic and you're good at talking about your game and you're good at communicating with others, that's kind of a different thing, but it's still a willingness to learn and a willingness to figure out different aspects that many people aren't willing to look at or are too afraid to look at. Willingness to learn is just one of the many aspects that we need to have. Let's keep moving. Number three on the list, man, if you are a good problem solver, hold the phone. You should be making games. You should be making games. Here's the deal. I feel like I am a, I actually feel like this is where I excel personally. I enjoy problem solving. It is kind of like a little high for me. I really, it's not that I enjoy when problems come, but I enjoy solving them. And I will, I can't go to bed if there is a problem that needs to be solved. I will just think about it over and over and over again. And this goes to the next level if problems don't stress you out. I haven't leveled up to that point yet. Problems can really stress me out sometimes. That's why it keeps me up at night. But if you have the ability to not get stressed out by problems, you should be making games because problems Problems are coming. Bugs and burnout, those are problems that people quit game dev over. I almost did. So if you have the ability to face problems head on, you should be making games right now. Because if you start making games and you have that problem solving mindset, you're going to be able to identify the issues sooner and solve those problems faster. And it's just gonna propel you so much further and faster. So go make games if you're a good problem solver. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. You got what it takes. Let's keep moving. Number four on the list is adaptability and resilience. This is a tough one for me specifically. This is probably where I lack the most, man. Stay into it, having self-discipline to come back to it. But if you have the ability to continue going, continue the grind, that's what you need when the dark days of game dev come because they will be coming. And if you have the ability to do the work when it's tough, you have what it takes because if there's one thing about game development that is certain is that it will be difficult. And like I said, if you have the ability to adapt to the hard times, adapt to new things, you're going to stay ahead of the curve. Many people will get stuck when those changes come and many people will fall out of game dev when those changes come. But if you have the ability and if you have the skill of adapting to the waves that come, you absolutely have what it takes to find success and make games. And you should be doing it right now because game dev's hard. It's really hard. 
and it takes years. And many people want that instant gratification. And if you have enough self-discipline to withhold that gratification and to keep going when it's tough, sky's the limit. You got it. Go do it. You should do it right now. The rest is history. Let's keep moving. Fifth on the list and arguably maybe the most important. I don't think so. I don't think there's one over the other here, but creativity. Creativity is a huge, huge word. It means so many different things. What I mean is creativity in all areas. Creativity in the stories you wanna tell, creativity in the art that you are able to put together, creativity in your problem solving, creativity in the way you communicate, creativity in your brainstorming. Creativity is what makes us stand out. And if you're able to bring your own uniqueness to your game development, your own uniqueness in the stories you tell it is going to set you apart and if there's one thing we all need in the game dev realm it is being unique and standing out from the sea of garbage i want to be very clear that people's games aren't garbage but there is a lot of garbage out there especially with ai and if you have the ability like i said to stand out among that you can be deficient in many areas and still find success if you have this so if you know that you have that in yourself strengthen it and lean into that because it's going to bring you one step closer to finding success and you should be making games right now those are the five skills that I have seen in people that have found success within the community. Whether it's Thomas Brush or the creator of Stardew Valley or the team that made Hades, these people show determination, resilience, a follow through mindset, and they're just brimming with creativity. And if you have those things, you will find success. And if you lack in those areas, it's okay. We all need to learn and get better. I want to take a moment to encourage everybody that maybe is lacking in a few areas. I know that I lack in many of the areas that I said, I probably only excel in one or two. So I want to encourage you if you're lacking in a few as well, but you might be asking yourself, how do I get better? Or you might be thinking, I will never be able to be a good problem solver. That's okay too. The first thing you need to do is identify where you lack. Identifying where you lack is the first step in getting better. In anything and then the second step would be to search yourself and figure out ways that you can improve an example being art if you really want to get better at art and you really want to boost your creativity that might look like sitting down with a notebook and drawing every day or reading books to fill that creative meter the second step of that is create good habits around that and create schedules where that you're implementing that that is the best way to get better at something is to do it more often and if you're still like man, I can't do this. I cannot recommend being part of a team because what a team will do is they will fill where you lack. If you're good at creativity, but you're a bad problem solver, find someone who is a good problem solver and they will fill that for you. If you lack resilience and adaptation, but are good at learning, find someone who can hold you accountable during those hard times because like I said, they're coming. Teaming up is the best way to strengthen your overall ability. When you're able to team up, you become a stronger unit because of it. And I cannot recommend it enough. And I hope this encourages you because even if you're lacking, you can still find success. I hope this was encouraging today because it was encouraging to me realizing that I am lacking and that's okay. So thank you guys so much for being here. If you like this content, hit that like and subscribe button and please leave a comment below talking about a quality that you have within yourself that you think is gonna lead you to success or one that you wanna get better at. Leave it below. I wanna see it, I wanna hear it, and I want people to be encouraged by it because when we talk about these things, we learn and we grow. We have a game coming out in a few months called Cave Masters. Go check it out, links are in the description below. If you're curious on how to team up, I've made a video about that as well, so go check it out. Again, thank you guys for being here. I'll see you next time. See you later.